I know I tweeted about, I had 50 or something tweets, so I was like, well, what's going on? This is kind of weird. Um, actually, quite a lot of exploration on why that was weird. And I thought, well, maybe it's because I'm relatively new and not that interesting. So I'll try, you know, Tony Hawk. So, uh, you know, I looked at his tweets, nothing at all. So uh, I emailed the guys in South Africa uh, who wrote the tool by now, they must have been thinking, I wish this English guy would just go away. Um, and uh, they tried to reproduce it and had the same challenges and digging a little bit deeper, we noticed that Twitter has got some limitations uh, in search. So it's pretty well documented, um, you know, out there. What Twitter search was, the API came from uh, another uh, organization called Summarize and it indexes, um, or maintains the index at least, uh, for about two weeks, roughly. Um, and some people aren't indexed at all, so the challenge I had was Tony Hawk wasn't indexed at all, and I was only getting the tweets that I'd written in the last two weeks. So, um, a bit of a challenge there, and that is where um, this thing came in handy, because uh, Roloff, the guy who um, essentially set up Perturba from uh, SensePost, he said, uh, dude, you should try local transforms. You can write your own code. I'm thinking, <laughs> you've got the wrong guy here. I don't write code. I play around with Perl now and again. Uh, he said, but, you know, if you can write, um, you know, if you can call a script or a program and you can pass it input and you can generate uh, output to standard output, then you can write a local transform, um, which, was, uh, which was pretty pretty interesting and compelling. So I set about it. By thinking, right, well, I'll try this with, with Perl um, and have a look at the Twitter API. Now, I, I bought this book, but actually I didn't really use it that much because there's a, you know, a huge set of Twitter API uh, documentation online, uh, which you can uh, search for. But um, it's not one API, it's three APIs. So forget the search API that we mentioned from Summarize and just focus on um, the other REST uh, API, which allows you to use commands, uh, you know, call, calls like this essentially. And this is where you'd be, uh, you know, extracting the tweets from uh, somebody. Um, and you've got a, a, an entity value there, which is uh, the person that you're looking to, uh, to grab the tweets from. Uh, if anybody wants the, you know, the code for playing around with this sort of stuff, um, I plan to just put it on, the, you know, on, the, uh, on my website, which is Security Geek, but the E's are threes. Um, so you can, you, know, you can do a lot, a lot of playing around with that. It's not all plain sailing um, either. There are some things which I wish were implemented in the Twitter API that, that aren't, like uh, searching by date and stuff like that. You kind of have to make that yourself. But Perl and LWP, uh, you know, really work uh, pretty well. So there's a couple more gotchas here as well, though. Um, you've got this 200 tweet limit. So when you, uh, you know, run the, the, the API call, you'll get 200 tweets back. So um, if you want to, like, look at uh, 400 tweets, for example, you, that's two API calls. Well, uh, that was an issue. Um, you couldn't search by date, so I couldn't say I want to get all of the tweets between these dates. I had to derive the dates by looking. Uh, each tweet has got um, an ID associated with it, and uh, you can see a time. So you pull a tweet with an ID, look at the time, and, um, you know, and then sort of figure out, well, let's say there's, you know, excellent, go to another tweet ID, guess that, say, okay, well, this is between two dates, that, that kind of works. Um, but there's a maximum history um, I haven't actually tested how, uh, how rigid that is, but 3,200 tweet uh, history, and you're limited to 150 API calls uh, per hour by default. So, as you can see, if you've got 100 people, which is quite easy in a graph like this because you're exploring vast sets of data, and you're running those transforms on all of those people. Um, in this uh, rather small example here, you'd have 100 people um, I'd be looking at making three a e API calls per person and end up with, you know, 300 API calls. That's already blown my, uh, my limit um, with, uh, with Twitter, so I'd have to do that over two hours. Uh, and that's where whitelisting comes in. 
you can go from 150 uh, API calls to 20,000 in an hour. Um, so you have to apply for that via, via Twitter, but uh, they were pretty good with that, said, you know, I'm a security consultant and looking into, you know, data analysis and what have you, and I'd like to be whitelisted, please. I thought that would take forever or I'd get a no. And, uh, you know, and, and they said, yeah, sure, he, he, here you go, basically, um, which then meant that I could run some pretty large graphs. So, okay, back to the, back to the story. Uh, I wanted to see who'd actually won these, uh, you know, won these skateboards. So uh, what I did, I picked out Tony Hawk, um, and then I ran the tweet, uh, the, uh, the, the transform that I'd written to pull out the tweets of people he mentioned um, here. So these are all of my local transforms, get tweet one, two, and three, and they'd search between certain uh, IDs uh, and pull out all of the tweets that had uh, either the, the uh, word found in there or had, um, you know, an at mention. So Twitter usernames are at username, um, so you can pull them out with a regular expression really easily. Um, and basically, I'd display those and discard everything else that he'd written. So I wasn't particularly interested in what he'd had for breakfast, but I was interested in if he was, you know, corresponding with someone through Twitter. So um, this is what it, what it ends up looking like. So for example, one of those, that one on the top left-hand corner there was uh, found uh, Atlanta, uh, you know, uh, uh, blah, 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 basically. Um, and that would have been a similar story for each of those. So potentially in that set of data uh, are the people who won these skateboards. Um, as you go a little bit further, uh, and run the, you know, run more of those transforms on a, a wider and wider data set, then you can start to see uh, relationships building between these people who's spoken to who. In this case, you'll see Tony's talked to a few people, and those people have also been people that were hiding stuff, so there's some relationship obviously there. And as you go further, then, uh, you know, the map gets a little bit more complex if you've, you know, if you're looking at it uh, closely top right hand corner to navigate again is a, a, you know, a great way of tackling that and you end up with uh, one of these um, which is a, a big graph. Um, I decided I'd have a bit of a go uh, at running more and more uh, transforms uh, so I set off a, you know, a, a transform on a big data set and went out running about halfway uh, around like a six mile loop, it occurred to me that this was all happening on some servers in South Africa and they might be getting a little bit pissed off. Um, so I ran back home pretty quickly and saw this um, and uh, you can't do a lot with, uh, with a map like that really. Um, so what you need to do is prune that basically and you can look for uh, you can look for entities that don't correspond with anybody else and just cut them out. So pruning your data set um, is a you know, sort of big activity in, uh, in Multigo. But you can get that then down and you can get a, a pretty nice graph. And here you can see you've got at hiding it is the, the dot at the top uh, left hand corner. You've got Tony Hawk. You've got somebody following at hiding it. You've got somebody who Tony's mentioned, and you've got some cor you know, correspondence between those two. So there's something going on there, and you can explore them and just end up with a data set of people who've been communicating. Uh, there's another view uh, here that you'll see in, uh, in Multigo. And uh, just to highlight where the lines are there, you can see pretty much the same sort of thing again. If you're looking at, or I guess you, you know, um, right now you might be thinking, well, how does this speed things up? Well, you apply edge weighting then you can see essentially who are the, uh, who are the top talkers um, in that uh, Twitter uh, event. And here you'll see Tony Hawk hiding it in Jerome Case. Um, but, you know, what on earth have I been going on about? Well, if you look, at, look here, then you'll see that there's me and there's this other guy, Stephen Gill, and there's Jerome Case. Well, Jerome Case, you might be scratching your head thinking, well, who's Jerome Case? Well, um, I didn't even know he had, uh, you know, a, a Twitter account. And this guy was the guy that sent me the, the skateboard, Tony Hawk's sort of right-hand man dude. Uh, he's got a, a Twitter account. He's, he, he's tweeting. And, um, and, you know, before I used this, uh, this graph, I didn't, I didn't know that. Um, it hadn't occurred to me to look. So if you're analyzing an event, 
you can see perhaps who are the most interesting people at the event. So you could apply that here to, you know, to Black Hat, for example, or to, to DEF CON or what have you, and see maybe where the big buzz was without actually having to attend. So um, you, know, you don't need to be limited to, uh, uh, to Twitter. You can just search uh, you know, websites for, for names, for example. So uh, this is what the guys uh, look like. I'll put that in. Um, so lessons learned, I got three lessons learned. Um, the first one, which uh, the Perturva guys really uh, instilled, was plan what you're, what you're doing, um, have an idea about how you're going to go about it before you go about it, otherwise you can generate a lot of, uh, a lot of mess. Um, the next thing, if you're using Multigo, is um, if you've got this, this setting here, uh, for speed and accuracy. If that bar is over to the left, you get less results, so it's good for uh, testing out your transforms. Um, and when you've got that working and you're happy with it, slide it across to the right. And if you're ever thinking, I'm not getting many results, what's going on, then um, it's probably because you've got that bar slid over to the, to the left. Um, and the third, uh, third sort of slide of lessons learned is that these local transforms you can apply these to a, a great deal more than Twitter, right? Um, you know, you can apply them in any context. Uh, the guys at uh, Perturva there have even analysed like a Spider-Man movie, who's talking to who and what the relationships are there. Um, if you're in an enterprise and you want to use this perhaps for you know, vulnerability testing, pen testing, what have you, consider the server platform so you're running transforms in your own enterprise. Um, and if you're going to... Uh, explore Twitter, then I'd seriously recommend taking a look at uh, applying for whitelisting. So, did it help me get um, a map? Uh, so, sort of, um, but uh, not really. Uh, my wife was expecting our, our first child, um, so um, what we ended up doing was, we, you know, we went to the hospital waiting for the chap to, uh, to arrive, took a bunch of printouts and stuff like that and uh, did it all by hand in the end because uh, I totally failed and, uh, and ran out of time. But uh, you could see some of the relationships, but uh, this, uh, this was what we ended up doing in the end, so I just wanted to, to come, come clean with that. But I don't know how many of you have seen this because this is a, a similar concept but using processing by uh, a guy called Jer Thorpe. Um, if you've not seen this, go Google around for just landed. The concept here was that people on Twitter, you know, were saying, oh, you know, uh, I just landed in Las Vegas, wheels down Las Vegas, you know, made it to Las Vegas or what have you. Um, so what he did, he analyzed. Uh, he got the Twitter profile of where they are, identified the location, used something called MetaCarta, which pulls out the, uh, the location and gives you a geographical grid reference, or, you know, um, and looked at where they'd landed and where they said they landed, where the, you know, sort of where, the, where the name was, passed that through MetaCarta and got a grid reference, mapped that in, uh, in processing and generated this pretty neat uh, visual of where people were going and flying to within a, within a data set. So um, I talked about Multigo, but you know you can apply this with different tools. Um, also with uh, with Twitter, I, you know, used the uh, the API stuff, and I'll share this. Um, this isn't Digital Equipment Corporation; it's a disasters emergency uh, charity in the in the UK, and they were looking at analysing their social media. Um, activity for uh, the Haiti disaster. And they wanted to see how many tweets they were making, how many of those tweets were being retweeted and stuff like that. So with those same API calls, I was able to apply that and generate, uh, you know, generate these graphs. But if you're looking at that in a sort of more professional way, check out Rowfeeder uh, by a guy called uh, Damon Cortesi. It's a really sweet product. Um, so on to... Um, on to another use case, really, um, probably focus a little bit more on the Nigerian crime aspect here rather than, uh, rather than Marti Martigo uh, just. But uh, this guy's pretty famous in, um, in Nigeria. He's wrote a song basically about 419 scamming uh, called I Go Chop Your Dollar. Um, and uh, he, he's pretty popular. So I got involved with this because a friend... Um, lost a, a laptop to uh, a scam on um, a certain uh, auction site and uh, wanted to, well, you know, work with the police and try and, 
you know, get the laptop back, basically. Well, um, I don't know how it is in the 